Welcome back to another Android box review. I have the A95XR1 in for testing, and this was sent in via Gearbest, and it's branded as AlphaWise. This is another one of the super budget Android boxes around at the minute. This is the power supply that's included. You'll get your own one depending on the region that you live in, and the HDMI cable, decent quality, fairly thick. The remote is quite similar to many of the Android boxes, but the buttons are raised up a bit more and perhaps makes it a bit easier to press. I would definitely suggest getting a wireless keyboard or air mouse for use with the Android box. This takes two AAA batteries, you don't get them supplied, and the user manual is a fairly basic generic guide. It just gives you some rough overview on how to set it up. Now moving in, taking a look at the box, very small size with this particular box, and we have a matte and glossy finish on the top. It's around about nine centimeters square on the back. With the power input, HDMI out, there's a AV out, and you also have Ethernet, and on the sides, two USB ports and the micro SD card. Nothing else on the other sides. There is an LED indicator. And on the underside, a couple of ventilation slots. No foam pads on this, they're actually hard plastic. Now when it's in standby, the LED is red and then goes to blue. It's a bit on the bright side, but it is reasonably well diffused from the front. Now when you boot up the box, you get a sort of quick start, which helps you select the language, connect to the Wi-Fi, etc. It's It's okay, it definitely helps if you've not used a box before. We keep the main interface, a bit of a variation on the media box, and you can see some of the icons on the bottom have a green arrow. That means that they're not actually installed on the system, but you can download them. There's sort of shortcuts for that. Once you go into the system settings, you'll see that there's a bit more color than we normally see. It's not just normal gray. But it's basically standard stuff that you're going to get. We have 8 gig storage on this particular box, but you can expand that with the micro SD slot. I did check for updates on this, but there weren't any. Pretty easy to work through onto the settings. If you go into the more settings, it takes you to the standard Android look. And this is Android 6, so not quite the latest version, but it is reasonably up to date. No extras with this, we're on single band Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, and there's no Miracast either. So just bear that in mind, but we are at a super budget level, so we can perhaps understand some of those emissions. Now going back to the main menu, you can see you do have a shortcut for Kodi add-ons, and there are quite a few extras in here that you can download to add the streams into Kodi. This is the section of the movie plugins. But there are also ones for sports as well as cartoons. It just makes it a bit easier if you wish to download any extra ones. There are quite a lot already included, and we'll show you some of those in a while. And some people set up the box for their own particular taste. There's quite a lot of uh, guides on how to do that. Set up Kodi how you wish to for the streams. There's also a sort of mini shortcut to, uh, I don't want to say a store, but it does have some Android apps already uh, listed out there. You don't have to register to download them. Just a few basic ones. There isn't a whole lot there, but it's enough to get you started with a few games without registering on the Play Store. Now the net navigation bar at the bottom can be dismissed and brought back, which is good. You can also take a screenshot as well. I'm just going on the bottom bar there. You can actually customize that however you wish. So um, you can download the ones that you want, or you can just go into the settings there and pick the shortcuts that you want, add or remove them as you wish. I'm not sure why they've had the links to the apps there, but it doesn't really matter. And looking at the apps that are included, the TV MC is just their customized Kodi. There's not a whole lot, there's not too many, just some basic ones. Mobdro, it gives you a link for that. It's definitely worth installing that particular app for the streaming. Now, if you go into the recommended again, that's got shortcut links to some common apps like Skype, Pandora, Twitter, and things like that. Um, it's different to most boxes. A lot of them just don't have that. They're just sort of suggestions, so you don't have to use it. It perhaps helps people that haven't set up the box before just to get going. Personally, I don't use many of those apps myself. And we go into the TVMC, which is basically Kodi. It's not quite the latest version, but it does have uh, apps already, uh, streams rather, pre-installed. 
So you can go through those. You can see 17.3, the latest one, but this is 16.1. And there's a ton of streams which you can add. I won't go through all of them, but they're basically all on there, um, virtually everything. Now onto the benchmark testing. I'm going to run Geekbench 4. And this comes back to the score just under 800 for the multi-core. So you can compare that to other boxes that I've looked at. It's definitely a bit quicker than the R69 box that I just reviewed recently a bit but I've done Geekbench 3 as well and that scores just over 907 so you can compare the performance on this the uh, rock chip with this this particular box is a bit quicker than the um, other box that I looked at recently there isn't a massive amount of difference in them though and you wouldn't particularly expect to get a huge performance this is the 3d test that I'm running and it scored just over a thousand points at 14 and a half frames a second so a touch quicker than the r69 but this box really isn't meant for any kind of intensive gaming light to moderate gaming at best now i've done a 4k sample just to see if the playback works okay and it works fine i didn't have any problems with 4k playback with this box and it's designed to do that and that's something the r69 isn't so if that's a feature that you need this will probably be the box for you over that one if you long press the power button, you can decide if you want to go into standby or reboot. And they did a Wi-Fi test, and they did pretty well on that. Upload wasn't quite as fast as some boxes, but the download was well into the high 20s. Now, as far as the streaming goes, I didn't have any problems with this, but I did notice it did get a bit hot running the benchmark tests. I did leave the box on for an entire afternoon streaming. I didn't see it lock up or freeze, so perhaps they just have a heat sink which could be a little bit bigger on the processor and chipset. So I don't think that's a problem, but it's worth mentioning the uh, thermal management might be a bit improved on that area. As far as the other points to talk about with the box, really it's more positive than negative, but there are a couple of small areas that I would consider. And um, perhaps I'm not overly keen on the layout on the main menu and the 3D capability isn't particularly good, but it's very similar to the other super budget box. But you don't get that Miracast or Bluetooth. Um, which could be a shame for some people. On the upside, the price is excellent and the streaming performance was pretty good and you have a more up-to-date Android operating system so you shouldn't have any problems with more recent apps. So I hope that was useful to you and don't forget to subscribe and also have a look at some of my other Android box reviews where you'll be able to compare the boxes.